welcome back guys to episode 1 of our WWE 2K15 Audio Universe Mode. First of all, I want to apologize for the delay in bringing this episode up. For those of you who've been waiting a while, I do apologize. I haven't had the time to do any recordings, but I had prepared Raw, I'd prepared NXT, I'd prepared SmackDown. All that was left was to record and upload. Another thing that's keeping me back is my internet speed. Really not fast. I'd say it's a fraction of what you guys would consider as slow net. So uploading an episode can take a couple of hours. That's what happened with episode zero. It took a couple of hours. I had to leave it overnight uploading that episode. So I do apologize. But Raw is here. And what I'm hoping to do is, while I've got the time today, maybe... I'll record Raw, then record NXT, then record SmackDown back to back. I'll try and do that today. And upload them over the course of the next couple of days. So I hope you guys will be patient. I hope you guys will wait for them. And I hope you guys will enjoy them. So tonight we start off on the Raw after our WrestleMania pay-per-view, which we touched on in the previous episode as stories building up to who our current champions and Mr. Money in the Bank are. And um, our general manager, Teddy Long, was out with the entire Divas division for the big announcement he was going to make about new titles that were to be introduced for the Divas tonight. We have one new, chi- one new title, the WWE Women's championship which was won by Bailey at WrestleMania after unifying the Divas title and the NXT women's title to have this new championship. And so the new titles Ted Long was going to introduce were the WWE women's tag team championships and there would be a tournament for Divas tag teams and the last two teams will compete for the titles at our first pay-per-view in three weeks, Extreme Rules. I want to make something clear. I would love to do a full month, right? But because of my internet speeds, I've had to drop to three weeks. I was going to do two weeks, but I thought two weeks wouldn't be enough for me to build up these rivalries and storylines. So I moved it up to three weeks. I should be able to build up something for an exciting pay-per-view within three weeks. So I'll be doing three weeks instead of a full month. I hope you guys will understand. And as for the WWE Women's Championship, Bailey will be defending the title in a triple threat match in the first main event tonight. She'll be taking on the former Divas Champion Charlotte and the former uh, NXT Women's Champion Becky Lynch who both lost their titles at WrestleMania. So it'll be a triple threat match for the new title, and it will be in the first main event of the evening. Just as Teddy Long was about to announce our second main event, out comes DX, led by the former WWE World Heavyweight Champion Triple H, who was looking for a rematch after losing the title to Dolph Ziggler in the main event at WrestleMania the previous night, but our general manager was a little reluctant. He was concerned about Dolph Ziggler's health, and he wasn't prepared to give Triple H his rematch until the champion popped up right after. He's ready. He's full, fully healed. He's healthy. He's ready, and that gave Teddy Long the confidence to make the match. So our second main event tonight will be the rematch from WrestleMania. Dolph Ziggler vs. Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And just to keep DX occupied, the general manager put them in matches. Batista and Batista and Ric Flair will be in tag team action against Edge and Christian. Then our Intercontinental Champion Randy Orton will be at ringside, joining commentary for the first in 
a series of contendership matches to find his first challenger for the Intercontinental Championship. It will kick off tonight in a fatal four-way, featuring his stablemate HBK taking on Kurt Angle, taking on CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, who've all been Intercontinental Champions. As for the New Age Outlaws, they'll also be in tag team action against the new WWE Tag Team Champions Enzo Amore and Big Cass. As for our third and final main event, it'll be the first in the best of five series for the United States Championship. This is because of the finish that happened at WrestleMania. We had the champion Ryback taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin in a 60-minute Iron Man match that ended in a draw. So Teddy Long decided to push it into a best of five series and if push comes to shove, they will have a final at Extreme Rules. So the first match in that best of five series will kick off tonight in the main event and there will be a special guest referee. We'll kick off with the first match. It's the tag team tournament for the women's tag team titles. The first match is between Lay Cool, Layla and Michelle McCool taking on Oksana and Alicia Fox, collectively known as Foxana. If I'm not mistaken, Alicia Fox is a former Divas champion. I should think so, right? And they were taking on a team of former Divas champions, women's champion, I think Michelle McCool either as a former Divas champion or former women's champion. I'd have to confirm. But they're both former champions. And so Alicia was hoping to bring her experience for her team into this match. But the experience that Layla and McCool have as former champions was too much for Foxana. And Laycool got the first win and move on in this tournament. The second match will be on NXT and the third match will be on SmackDown and it will go on and on like that until we have two teams remaining and they will fight for the titles at Extreme Rules. Our second match is the Fatal 4-Way Contenders match for the Intercontinental title. We have HBK taking on Kurt Angle, taking on CM Punk and... Daniel Bryan, with the champion Randy Orton joining commentary. This is a fatal four-way match. There are no countouts. There are no disqualifications. So you can bet that the champion was going to get involved some way, somehow, and help his partner HBK for a win. But CM Punk and Daniel Bryan were on his tail. They took Orton out of the equation. But unfortunately, they were taken out by HBK, who found his opening, hitting both of them with switch and music, before being caught by Kurt Angle with the angle slam and being made to tap out with the ankle lock. Now with Randy Orton out, CM Punk out, Daniel Bryan out, HBK was nowhere near the rope, right in the middle of the ring, tapped out, and Kurt Angle becomes our first contender to qualify in this series. The second match will be on NXT, and the third match will be on SmackDown. And just like the women's tag team tournament, it will go on and on until we have our contender, and they will face Randy Orton for the title at Extreme Rules. Our next match is the first tag team... Well, is it the first? The second tag team match of the evening. We have the New Age Outlaws taking on the new... WWE Tag Team Champions Enzo Amore and Big Cass in their first match on Raw since winning the titles at WrestleMania from the prime time players. Now this was purely a battle of experience. The New Age Outlaws have been Tag Team Champions multiple times and they underestimated Enzo Amore and Big Cass believing that, you know, they are the new champions right now, but they're still very green as far as tag teams goes. But unfortunately, Enzo Amore and Big Cass proved them wrong, and they got a big win over 
the New Age outlaws, proving that they have enough experience to not only be tag team champions, but to overcome former tag team champions who've been to the top many times. And just as Enzo Amore and Big Cass were celebrating, out come the former tag team champions, the primetime players, who made the date for their rematch. And it will be at Extreme Rules. The rematch for the WWE Tag Team Championships will be at Extreme Rules. And so in the meantime, the former champions just told their challengers to prepare, be ready for the next three weeks. They will be doing the same thing leading up to their match at Extreme Rules. And just before our next tag team match, we went backstage to where Charlotte was preparing for that triple threat match that was going on in the first main event. And out comes Sasha Banks, who wanted to talk to her about something. And Charlotte simply gave an answer, I'll see, I'll think about it. And and Sasha Banks left with that. Then back to the ring, we have our next tag team match. Batista and Ric Flair versus Edge and Christian. Now the last time we saw Batista and Ric Flair in action as a team was at Elimination Chamber where they took on Ziggler and Brock Lesnar and were defeated. But tonight they were looking to get a victory over another legendary tag team. And it wasn't long before Ric Flair, you know, going back to his old ways, finding a simple trick to get his team over. He didn't need a low blow, he didn't need a weapon, he just needed to get his feet on the bottom rope as he pinned Edge for the 1-2-3. Dirtiest player in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Getting a win for Batista and Ric Flair. And we move on to our first main event. That triple threat match for the WWE Women's Championship between the champion, Bailey, taking on former Divas champion, Charlotte, and former NXT Women's Champion, Becky Lynch. Now, if you remember in the previous episode, both Divas and NXT Women's titles were on the line at WrestleMania in a big battle royal that featured the entire... Divas division, as well as the legends and former Divas who came back to our universe mode to compete. And from that battle royal, eight Divas remained and they would compete in a ladder match for the new championship. And from those eight Divas, Bailey pulled through, overcame the odds, and won the title to become the first WWE Women's Champion. Now, in her first title defense, she's taking on former champions who really put her through the paces because they felt like her win at WrestleMania was a fluke, that she is not prepared to be a champion, that, you know, she just got the championship now, but she's not good enough to lead the Divas division as the top lady of the ring. So you could expect Charlotte and Becky, they teamed up a couple of times on Bailey, just to prove a point before they went one-on-one with each other because they felt like they could put on a better match without Bailey in there. But Bailey, she pulled through, she fought back, taking both of them down and proving that she belongs at the top of the mountain. She belongs in the championship picture and she will be the best women's champion that we've seen ever. And so Bailey overcame the odds once again, putting down Charlotte and Becky Lynch to retain the championship. With that first hurdle overcome, you gotta ask who will step up to face Bailey next? And where will they challenge for the title? Will it be at Extreme Rules? Or will it be at the first NXT special that will happen on the weekend of that pay-per-view. It'll be when on the yeah, the third weekend. I'll come up with a name for the special, but you guys, you're more than welcome to suggest a name. It's NXT TakeOver, then the name of the special. So you can put your suggestions 
within the in the commentary section or if you follow me on Twitter at Alan Cedos, that's one word, A double L E N C double E D O S. You follow me there, you can suggest your name for the NXT special there on Twitter. Moving on to our second main event, it is the rematch for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship between champion Dolph Ziggler and former champion Triple H. Now, in the previous episode, we did touch on how Dolph Ziggler got to main eventing WrestleMania against Triple H, and he overcame a lot of odds. He almost didn't make it to that match at WrestleMania because of DX, who attacked him backstage hours before that main event. But he pulled through, he fought back, and with the hel- with some help from other superstars who wanted to get revenge on DX, he defeated Triple H for the title. And tonight they would be meeting once again in a rematch. But it would be different because... This time, Triple H decided that he was going to face Dolph Ziggler on his own without DX's help. So he was explicit in telling his stablemates not to interfere, not to be involved. He'll face Triple H, he'll face Dolph Ziggler one-on-one on his own and prove that he can beat Dolph Ziggler fair and square. But in as much as Triple H wanted to beat Dolph Ziggler and win back the title, Dolph Ziggler had a point to prove. He's the champion now. He was going to be a fighting champion and regardless of who steps up to challenge him for the title, he will do his best to fight and retain the championship. And so he gave Triple H a fight. Lots of near falls, lots of counters, lots of reversals. But no dirty tricks from Triple H. He was going to fight fair and square and beat Dolph Ziggler fair and square. But the champion, knowing Dolph Ziggler how he is, he fought back. He would not go down. He would not stay down. He kicked out from the first attempt at a pedigree. And he hit Triple H with the zigzag. Triple H kicked out of that one. The match continued, tried again later on, didn't work. It took a third zigzag to put Triple H out for the 1-2-3, and Ziggler retained his championship. Now after the match, Ziggler wanted to acknowledge Triple H for the match they've just had, and he extended his hand, he wanted to shake Triple H's hand, but the game would not go down that road and instead snubbed. Dolph Ziggler's handshake and left the ring. Just as he's walking back up the ramp, there's a clip from backstage playing where Brock Lesnar has just taken out DX and Hideo was on his way to the ring, possibly to cash in, but he walked into Lesnar and got taken out as well. Minutes later, Lesnar's out in the ring. He's facing Triple H. Ziggler comes in. Wondering what's going on. Next thing you know, we have a three-way match on the ramp. It took a band of security to come out and break these three guys up because it would have escalated into fighting in the crowd. So, Ziggler retained his championship, but Lesnar has come back and... Is he going after Triple H? Is he going after Ziggler? We'll have to find out next week on Raw. But just before our final main event... Charlotte was backstage again, and with her response to Sasha, she gave her a yes. Just like that, yes. Then for our main event now, third and final, is the first in a best of five series for the United States Championship between champion Ryback and Stone Cold Steve Austin, which was continuing from the finish they had at WrestleMania the previous evening where they competed in a 60-minute Iron Man match which ended with with a draw. But for this match, there would be a special guest referee and the general manager came out to introduce him. Who else but 
the American dream, Dusty Roads. I wanted to do something special for Dusty Roads, and because I'm doing audio universe mode, well, I couldn't exactly. I would have loved to, you know, feature him in a match, but I decided, you know, he's a former United States champion and he's the American dream. So what better way to, you know, honor him in my own way than to have him special guest in a United States championship match, right? So he's our special guest referee in this one. And knowing Dusty, he had the crowd on their feet the whole match. He was the center of attention. Despite that, Stone Cold Steve Austin was in this match. But, you know, he called the match right down the middle. As Stone Cold got the first win in this best of five series. Stone Cold was, of course, he was going to celebrate with Dusty Rhodes. And knowing Stone Cold, he does not end the celebration without someone getting stunned. But Dusty was reminding him that, hey, he's an old man. You can stun anyone in the arena, but hey, he's, he's an old man. He's, he's not fit for that. And that puts Stone Cold off guard just for a moment. And in that moment, he gets hit by a series of, you know, jabs from out of nowhere. Those classic jabs before that bionic elbow put the Texas Rattlesnake down and Dusty got his celebration solo so that was my you know my little main event with Dusty Rhodes as the special guest referee for this United States title series um i didn't really know Dusty until 2006 2007 when i think Cody Rhodes was in WWE by then and I think there was an angle when Dusty was involved. That was how I got to know about Dusty Rhodes. And seeing the impact he's had on fans and the wrestling industry as a whole, it was overwhelming. Money in the Bank was, was hard to watch, honestly. And we will miss him. And we can't thank him enough for the contributions he's made especially with NXT. I mean, NXT was Dusty Rhodes, and now that he's gone, I wonder what what will happen to NXT. But I hope that they will be able to continue, and you know, we will be supporting them. So speaking of NXT, that will be our next episode, episode 2 of this series. And I hope you guys will be looking forward to it. I've got some time today, so hopefully I'll record NXT a couple of hours after this. And then after that, I'll record SmackDown to conclude the first week of our audio universe mode. So those of you who liked episode zero, the prologue episode, thank you. I hope you enjoyed our first Raw episode today. And we'll be looking forward to the NXT episode. I'm still new at this uh, universe mode series thing, but I will do my best to come up with a series that you guys can enjoy, a series that you can share with your friends and family, because you can listen to this anywhere, anytime, on the go, wherever. That's the beauty about doing an audio universe mode. You can listen to it anywhere, just like a regular podcast. And I hope you guys appreciate that and like the series because of that. Now for those of you who are wondering, will Universe Mode be the only series I'll be doing on this channel? Answer is yes, it's the only series I'll be doing. This is because, you know, I feel that as much as most YouTubers want to do other things on their channels with other series and all, it kind of alienates that portion of their subscribers who found their channels mainly for their universe mode series, you know, and if you're going to have multiple series and you're not going to be releasing universe mode frequently, you're going to have people asking, where's universe mode, where's universe mode? And so I decided universe mode will be the only series I'll be doing on this channel, so you guys 
won't have to worry about when the next episode will be because if you're going to get an episode today, then you're guaranteed that the next episode will be another universe mode um, installment. But I would love to do reviews for, you know, the weekly shows, Raw, SmackDown, NXT. I'd love to do those. And hopefully, like, if I can get myself sorted out, I will be doing reviews for those, maybe even pay-per-views. I would love to talk about, um, what was our previous pay-per-view? Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank was was cool. I'd love to talk about that as well. So over the course of maybe the next couple of weeks, I will be doing reviews for our weekly shows. I'm also thinking of doing what they call fantasy booking. Is that right, Tom? Fantasy booking, where you take superstars who are in a rivalry right now and you try and book how their rivalry would go. I'd love to do something like that. So either you guys, you can suggest which rivalries you'd like me to try and fantasy book or I could just pick random rivalries right now and try and book them forward. Uh, For example, let's take... Kevin Owens and John Cena. The way I would book them would be well, Kevin Owens is going to face Finn Balor for the NXT title. He's defending the NXT title against Finn Balor at that paper, not paper, that special in Japan, right? And most of us we expect Finn Balor to beat Kevin Owens at that special. So I would have their rematch done at uh, Battleground, the next pay-per-view. Well, this is because I assume they are going to keep Kevin Owens versus John Cena Part 3 for SummerSlam. And so if they can book Kevin Owens this way, they'll at least have him occupied at a major pay-per-view. And what better way to have him occupied than the rematch for the NXT title against Finn Balor? Right at Battleground, and if they're going to have July, the month of July, free for you know new subscribers for the WWE Network, that's a way they can attract more people aside from the main event for the WWE title, Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. They could at least attract more people if they can include that title match, Kevin Owens Finn Balor rematch at Battleground. And then, of course, Finn Balor defeats Kevin Owens. Then leading up to SummerSlam, we can build up for Kevin Owens versus John Cena for the United States title. Kevin Owens beats John Cena for the title at SummerSlam, right? And then I would have him keep the title until next year, WrestleMania. And there, I would book Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn for the United States title, right? Because I feel like Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn has yet to really happen, you know, without us expecting Kevin Owens to, you know, completely destroy Sami Zayn for the third time. But this time, we have something, we have a big match between them at WrestleMania for the United States title. And I think that's where we can have Sami Zayn finally get his redemption off of Kevin Owens by beating him for the United States Championship and we can bring Sami Zayn onto the main roster. If not, bringing him onto the main roster leading up to WrestleMania. That's that's how I'd book Kevin Owens forward. That's, that's just an example of the fantasy booking idea that I had in mind. So if you guys have suggestions for any other superstars you'd like me to try and fantasy book you're more than welcome to suggest in the comment in the comment section or on twitter i'll leave my handle in the description below for you guys you can follow me there so thank you for listening to our first episode of this series monday night raw our next episode will be nxt look forward to that so i'll see you there thank you